to the last by Mitchell F. Haspel. Battle lurched among the callous stars in the void space of exhausted Cothonia. Captain Rumthko, Zaleska, stood at the lectern extending from the arm of the Sala Mandentum. The throne dominated the center of the command dais, and she could not bring herself to remain seated. The incense and constant Ben Harak droning from the censored choir carried an ominous tone, amplifying her nerves. The activity in the stratagem continued, as mundane as ever. Several skulls and mechatendral cherums swooped among the flying buttresses, conveying missives to their respective ministers. Junior officers and servitors tended cogitator banks, bristling with status runes of every shape and color. The last command had ended in disaster. Gigion Dachro, the first officer of the Bringer of Justice, the task force battlecruiser, had commanded a mutiny and murdered his captain. Then he opened fire on the escorts as a signal to the other traitors in the fleet. In moments of the bulk of betrayal, had borne its deadly fruit. Lumko's critically wounded ship fled, escaping largely due to her inurangnum crew, who overcharged the engines and reactors against all measure of caution. Most of them died less than a fortnight later of severe radiation poisoning. They had trusted her and done their utmost, and Though her mind assured her that she'd done all she could, her heart whispered of her failure to her crew. Now, she captained the Firirum Pregirto, a vessel of considerable size and powers. The adept of Mars themselves, eager for vengeance after their recent schism, had ratified the lunar hole to the Kutmus class heavy cruiser configuration. The additional weapons and reactor provided firepower unmatched in anything short of a grand cruiser. The ships, her ships, machine spirit thrummed with impatience, as ready to prove itself as she was. A chance to make things right. Commander Alta, her first officer, a walk-in recruitment poster in his blue and white Amata Imperialis uniform, have served with her for nearly two decades now. When she made captain, she made sure he could be at her side. Her second officer, Lieutenant Mirius, moved from station to station, peering at displays over crew members' shoulders. His hand rubbed aimlessly at his bionic leg. Dominating the front of the stratagem, Cothonia's orbital plate loomed in the oculus display, a massive floating city fortress suspended in geo-stationary orbit. It represented a marvel of imperial engineering. The Ferrum Progetto rested at high anchor above it reinforcing and resupplying the loyalist forces of Lord Casterian Evander Geras, who had relocated his command there to better bolster his defenses. After traitor Astartes and the worthless planet below had managed to send a distress call, he evacuated his wounded to liberate planet-side Medicaid facilities for expected casualties. The traitor's relief might never come, or... It could be speeding its way through the chaotic Impidium right now. So, for the last three hours, the Purigito's holds and living spaces had been emptying themselves of reserves, troops, and supplies, and filling them with recovering members of the Imperial Army Solo Exolia and Catholic militia. The Purigito's lower decks swelled with 
convulsing wounded and every rank and occupation. Vermiko pulled the chrono from her pocket and assessed the time. The chrono, a magnificent clockwork replica with a marble face, had been in her family for generations. The seven delicate silvered hands stitched out their arcs, donating the passage of time in rarely seen bespoke precision. She could use the data feed timestamps through her monocular, but she enjoyed the tactical feed of the corona and the way its analog indicators spoke to her. She snapped the golden cover shut and placed it back on her pocket. Young man Lissi waited respectfully out of the view and cleared her throat theatrically. It has been some hours since you ate. Lissy had the heart of the void born about her. She held the tray brimming with fine cups of exotic tea atop delicate saucers. Plates of sliced meats and cheeses competed for attention. Grumko took a cup but waved away the chariot. Lissy gave her a knowing look. Fatigue is the enemy of vigilance. You worry too much, ma'am. A captain's duty is to worry. To exercise and examine every hypothetical a thousandfold. Better to suffer in the mind than in the flesh. From Honos Domastro Prinitia, Commander Alto asked. Rumka sat in the command throne and retracted the lectern. From Rumko Skeliska's ever-growing list of dubious aphorisms. They shared a laugh. Rumko placed a cup saucer on the throne's arm and took a long draught from the warm liquid. She closed her eyes and tried to let some of the tension bleed away. The avalanche of massive traffic in the Segmentum Solar made it likely no one had received the traitor's missive. A blaring clixion forced her eyes open. Violet indicator runes flashed on the command throne and lectern screens. The monocular data feed scrolled warnings from the sensors almost too quickly to read. Report all bearings as relative, Rumko ordered as she began to process them. The master of Auspex, a modified Martian tech adept, blared in a mechanical voice. Warp translation indication. Bearing 242 Mark 028. Range 239. Dimso 233 meters. And Brave closing. Terror, that's close, Walter said. At flank, they'll be at the immediate range in just over an hour, less if we meet them. Rimko checked her data feeds and stood, the tension returning to her tenfold. Her action knocked the saucer from the arm of the command throne. It fell and shattered. Rimko considered the fine porcelain pieces of the shattered plate against the dark steel floor of the command dais, and it struck her as an ill omen. Who are they? She voiced aloud, though she considered their risky maneuver by bypassing the Mandeville point and entering real space so close to Cathonia's gravity well. She already knew the answer. The master of Auspex mistook her rhetorical question for a command. Well, Scan drive signatures indicate vessels last known to being the sons of Horus. Traitors. They have come. The crew burst into action. Rumko commanded though her people were already in motion. Master of the Vox, reply shipwide. General, General quarters, quarters, battle stations, battle stations, stations enemy fleet incoming. incoming. Strap, Strap in and, and lock to your post. post. Harden for high gravity maneuvers and, and possible impacts. impacts. This, this is, is not a drill. drill. The Vox thief, built into the command throne, made her voice sound rich as it boomed through the canervous space of the ship. The loom strips throughout the bridge dimmed and shone red, 
and amber to indicate the change in readiness condition and allow crew members to focus on their data screens more readily. A shrill alert klaxion sounded three times. Yomi and Lassie, please clear this and rid of these constructs. She indicated the broken plate, hovering servo skulls and mechatendral cherubs fittering about. Any one of them could become a devastating weapon if the Pagirio suffered gravity or inertial dampening loss for even a second. Master of the Engine Arm, bring Reactor 3 to 100%. Master Gunner, ready all lance batteries. Master of Ordnance, ready macro batteries and torpedoes. Master of the Vox, please reply our readiness status to Admiral Carambis. We shall be ready to break orbit in five minutes. Commander Alto interrupted her. Captain, what of the evacuation operations? Ruko pursed her lips in annoyance. They were no longer a priority. The Ferrum Progito was a ship of the line, not some menial transport. Master of the Vox, contact Orbital Control and tell them we are ceasing evacuation and resupply operations. Any craft already en route may proceed to their destinations, but let them know once we start moving. That's it. The Master of the Vox acknowledged her command with a court nod and went about his duty. Master of Auspex, how many traitors shall we expect? Rumko asked. The tech adept's mechanical voice grated in her ears. Eight ships of various displacement, two cruisers, and associated escorts. Commander Alta scoffed. That's all. Rumko gave him a worried glance. I agree. The force seems small. Even as she spoke, the monocular overlaid the displacement. Crew completements, weapon loadouts, and, of course, speed and bearings of the incoming ships across her vision. Across the rest of the bridge, tech adepts and the Amata Imperialis personnel strapped themselves into their duty seats. All save the Master of the Helm, who was always secured into the Helm throne as a matter, of course. The score of mechatendrite cables attached to receptors in her skull and spine bound her to the Brigito in a grotesque but necessary communion of biology and technology. Lieutenant Mirius moved from station to station, double-checking the crew positions and ensuring servitor units were secure. He noted a status alert on one of the screens. Master of the Helm, Rumko said. Make ready to run up the main engines. Lieutenant Mirrors merely shouted, We've got a contingent of Astartes coming aboard. That's irregular. Rumko crossed the command dais to observe the screen, then stepped back to the command throne. All we need... Incoming transmission from Braxius Dinet, Admiral Cambrius. The master of the Vox interrupted. The Admiral appeared on a hololithic display in front of the command dais, rendered in stactic field vortexes of interfering light, seem larger than life. Captain Solaka, my complaints on readying your vessel with such alexivity. However, I believe you may stand down and continue evacuation and resupply operations as long as it is practicable. I believe we're at the point, Admiral, Rumko answered. I mean to break orbit and move on to intercept course within minutes. You misunderstand me, Captain. The Admiral smiled as he said it. We are more than a match for this rebel. The Furum Brugio and the Scratidium Victis will assist the Imperial Fist Frigate Sword of Truth, in providing cover and fire support in Lord Castellan Gradius forces on the orbital plate. This should not only be necessary if one of the traitors should slip by us, which they will not. Of course, sir. Nuko acknowledged and sighed. She bristled. Doubt nagged at her spirit. 
could this be a matter of trust? This was a perfect opportunity to blood the refitted Firim Perejito. She sensed that the ship's machine spirit agreed with her. Yet, they were to remain in regard. She turned briefly from the hall of the display and turned a superstitious message into a command thrones data slate. If bait to lure from Cathonia, if trap. She sent it to the Admiral across a data link only he could see. On the hololith, she heard the Admiral's acknowledgement chime as he received a message. He smiled at her with an avenucular air. Rest assured, if more traitors arrive, there shan't be more. They are occupied elsewhere. Besides, we hold with present forces. Where the arch traitor himself to arrive, it's not as if we could muster more. His lips pressed together on a tight line of determination. You have your orders. Aye, sir, Rimko said, but the Admiral had already disconnected the link from the, his end. Over the next few minutes, stations throughout the ship reported readiness status condition 1. The Admiral might not think they'd be required, but the Fira and Perdito stood ready should the need arise. Commander Alter moved to her side. Shall I remain here, then, in light of our new orders? She met his eyes as she considered her options. How would she have behaved before the betrayal? She couldn't allow herself a second guess her actions. Doubt killed. She held her first officer's gaze for perhaps a moment too long, but not long enough that any of the crew noticed. No, Commander. I shall need you at your post in Strategium Secundus. She lowered her voice so only he could hear. Despite Admiral Cambella's confidence, I'll warrant. We've got a fight coming to us yet. I'll need you to double-check that my calculations and assume command of the ship should understood, Captain. He stepped back, saluted, and departed for the secondary bridge, located deep in the heart of the vessel, next to the navigator's blister. It was the least vulnerable section of the Firm Brigito. However, the redundant systems there were hardened to the point of impracticability for standard command. They were more than adequate for the ship's survival, but lacked the finesse preferred for normal operations. As Commander Alto left the Strategium, he stepped aside as a massive power-armored figure cowered its way in. He was one of the legionaries Astartes, the crimson looms played across dingy and tarnished ceramite painted in the yellow livery of the Imperial Fist Legion. Rumko had seen space marines before standing in parade review. They'd have impressed her as paragons of martial powers. This one looked like he came fresh from combat. In places, the chipped coloring on his armor showed the bare plate beneath. She couldn't fathom why he was on her bridge. The space marine towered over her, his voice issued forth as harsh rubble from a damaged vox emitter. You are the vessel ship mistress. Not a question. A statement. I am her captain. Yes, my lord, I... She saw her relatively diminutive form reflected in his helmet's unsympathetic emerald eye lenses. I am a legionary sergeant. Avrius Jalliot of the 456 Reserve Company. Lord Castiel and Geras sent me. May I inquire as to your purpose, Sergeant? The defenses on the orbital plate will not curb an attack. The Lord Castellan needs additional defense. Your vessel may suffice. As we bought it, we overheard and saw your preparations to leave orbit. We grew concerned. You needn't be. I have my orders. 
I shall defend the orbital plate to the best of my ability. Rimko held up one finger to the legionary. He turned to the master of Auspex. Boost power to the auger arrays. Monitor the admiral's engagement and inform me the instant anything changes. She returned her attention to the space marine. If may I ask, my lord, how many of your brethren accompany you? Enough to take this vessel if necessary. There I was. The legionary Stardis served as a failsafe. They didn't trust her or her crew. Sergeant Jalid merely stated fact. Should he desire it, the legionary could commandeer the vessel even now, alone. No one in the Tradium had the means to stop him. Despite the torrent of indignity and anger flowing through her, Rumiko smiled, hoping to diffuse some of the tension. You misunderstand me, my lord. To make room for the evacuated wounded, we've sent many of our forces planetside. We no longer have a full complaint of troops aboard. We still have the ship security, true, but we would be hard-pressed to repel traitor Astartes should battle be joined. The bulk of the fighting may fall to- I have a squad with me, Jirid answered. A squad might suffice, if might not. In any case, it would have to do. She felt further questions would annoy the legionary. Very well. Rimko said. The master of Auxpics, grating voice, announced. Our fleet is engaging. Exchange of long-range lance fire and torpedoes. Rimko's fingers selected the appropriate runes and fed the incoming Auspex data directly to the monocular, which rendered loyal and traitor ships as wireframe models hovering in her field of vision. The next few minutes would be critical. Legionary Jalad interrupted her thoughts. You doubt the situation. You worry. A captain's duty, Sergeant. The Admiral is more than capable of dealing with the present threat. Rimko nodded. She couldn't tell the Legionary that the Admiral bore the rank due to the familial reputation, and that he had consistently failed upwards through his career. Over the course of the next quarter hour, she watched as his maneuvers against the traitor fleet through her monocular display. Rote and unimaginative, but adequate to the situation, the traitor fleet was outclassed. Warp translation, multiple signatures, the master of Auspex announced. Her stomach dropped her head the deck. Where and how many? Sixteen signatures bearing 038 mark 031. Range 244.42 megameters. Correction 18 signatures. Damnation sank into the solar momentum. The tide of battle had just turned towards the disastrous. Helm, clear all moorings and run up the mains. Inform orbital. All extraction operations cease immediately. Craft aboard may depart if they wish to take their chances. Our bays will close in two minutes. Any ship not clear stays with us. Auspects, sever all electromagnetic tethers with the orbital plate. Ingenarum! Sergeant Gillard interrupted her stream of command with one resounding word. Stop! Actions in the strategium came to a standstill. Rage bloomed in Rimko's chest. She rose from the command throne and turned to the space marine. She gestured to an open area to the rear of the bridge where they might confer. Sergeant, a word if you please. Rimko straightened her tunic and used the action to as an excuse to keep her emotions in check. The legionary didn't say a word. Sergeant, I'm aware that some Astartes have been trained in the domain of void warfare. Might we be so fortunate regarding your experience? Jalid ignored her question. I have my orders, as you have yours. 
the orb the plate must be defended at all costs. Understood and agreed. However, I needn't remind you of the principle of unity of command. If we are succeed in our mission, I cannot have anyone gainsaying my orders. Even you, Sergeant. If you wish, I will cede command to you. But I suspect that would rather jeopardize the defense of the plate of Cthonia itself. The legionary didn't move. She may as well have been speaking to a statue. The Master of Auspex announced. Correction, 21 signatures. Correction, 26 signatures. Previous bearings unchanged. Rimko forced herself to inhale and exhale deeply. Additionally, the Ferrum Progetto is a ship of the line. Not an orbital station, not a planetary defense fortress. Our firepower advantage are coupled with our ability to maneuver. And against each overwhelming numbers maneuver we must. Green eye lenses stared back at her. A long moment passed. Long enough for Rumko Kazu consider that she might have overstepped, despite her captaincy. Finally, Sergeant Gilead spoke. Proceed. Rumko didn't waste an instant and addressed her bridge. You have your orders. Ingenorum, ready void shields. Activate in. She drew forth her chrono, snapped the face open, and activated the timer. Two minutes. Mark. She sat back down in the command throne and strapped herself in. Rimko turned her head to address Legionary Jalid. My lord, I'm afraid the strategium's design may not accommodate the star T psychology. Might I suggest... She was interrupted by two loud thumps as the space marine maglocked his feet to the decking. Incoming transmission from Prax Directorium. One-way transmission in encrypted white band. The Vox Master said. Rimko understood the unspoken implications. Even a Mars pattern battlecruiser like the Praxis Teclitium couldn't face these numbers. The traitors outnumbered the Loyalist feet nearly three to one. Admiral Camberis appeared on the homolith. All ships, clear the system. It is vital Terra receives intelligence of this action. Astropathic communications may not suffice. Deliver warnings psychically, if possible. We shall conduct a fighting withdrawal in good order to clear the system, as we might. Fight well. May your guns fire true. For the Imperium! He turned from the picked recorder, and before the transmission ended, issued commands to his task force. Close order. Nine of battlehead. Bring us closer to Carthonia. Then after... The message ended. The Admiral behaved valiantly, and Rimko felt a twinge of guilt at having belanged him in her thoughts earlier. She could apologize to him later to see if he, f if he survived. If any of them survived, that is. Vox, get me the strategium Victus. Tight beam. In a few seconds, Captain Grigmon's concerned face appeared on the Horolith. Diostratus, Captain Sarka. Indeed, I have new orders for you, Balda. And you're not going to like them, Rimko said. She served with Balda, Gigamon, for years. By all rights, the fair Brigito should have been his command. He smiled dutifully, and I guess you want me to make a run for Terra? Rimko nodded. Just so. Your frigate has the best chance of clearing the system. Go now, in best speed. You know we would have stayed, he said. I know. Goodbye, Rimko. Fight well. Goodbye, Baldo. All speed. The Holith winked out. Rimko addressed Lieutenant Miris. See to it that our astropaths send a warning to Terra. Aye, ma'am, he said, and turned his attention to the data slate mounted at his station. 
Vox, enable a closed circuit from the command throne to the secondary bridge, Rimkos said. Immediately, Commander Alto's voice came through. We are established, Captain. Very well. Rimko salvaged her monocular to the Hololith. In the Oculus Simulacrum, the Hololith display showed a wireframe strategic view, in including Carthonia and the orbital plate. Behind it, the Oculus defaulted into a split window, true pick display, focusing on magnifying tractical perspectives of the Pragita and her immediate surroundings. Rimko displays feed directly into the stratagem Secundus. She would see Commander Alto's inputs on her vessels, and vice versa. She manipulated the display using the lectern's data slate and overlaid argol array feeds of the immediate battle space. The various parameters denoting the planet's gravity well. She zoomed out to the ongoing battle. The Loyalist forces were taking damage, but availing themselves well. Despite Admiral Cambella's best efforts, we know some traitor ships will get through. They will have to decelerate by the time they reach this point. She marked an X on the data slate. That's when we'll have them. Master of Ordnance, how many mines do we have aboard? Five hundred, ready to deploy. Not enough to lay an effective minefield, nor have we have the time, ma'am. Understood, Rimko said. We don't need an effective minefield. We just need enough to slow them down. We'll set the mines for a delayed activation based on their incoming speeds and trajectories. We must stay close to the planet and the orbital plate. We must turn that to our advantage. We can use Cathonia's gravity well to shape our orbital maneuvers. Our strategy must lie in choosing the time and place of engagement to our factor. They'll expect to overwhelm us. Commander Alta, I'll need your people to serve as secondary fire control. I will need clear consent firing solutions for vessels within this parameter. She drew a circle on the data slate and it appeared as a sphere on the holographic display. On the display, a holographic segmentum victus cleared the edges of the sphere, racing away at flank speed towards the Mandeville point, opposite the ongoing battle. Feed me possible targets of opportunity and where we might combine efforts with orbital plate defenses and Sword of Truth. Void shields activated. Lieutenant Miras announced. Very well. Close all void shutters. Whatever ships didn't make it off are long for the ride, Rumko said. The Master of Auspix announced. Incoming traitor vessels, stormbirds, and assault craft. The trajectory suggests they are headed for the orbital plate. Open fire with flak cannons. She turned to the legionary Jaliut. We'll do what we can, but our concern must be for the capital ships. If they begin orbital bombardment, well, your forces have no way of combating that. The deck vibrated with the recoil of flak batteries. Agreed. The space marine rumbled the answer. My brothers yearn to battle those traitors. Rest assured, those who land will wish they hadn't. Rimko nodded in agreement, but turned to address her command crew. Master of Arms, see to it that we have weapons and choke point defenses throughout the ship. Arm any of the Solar Exoria or Planetary Militia who might still fight despite their injuries. They should be encouraged to do so. I don't need to remind you that a boarding action by traitor forces is a danger which would render all other efforts futile. The mass of arms turned to a station and began coordinating defenses. Fox, give me shipwide. She waited a moment to compose her words. Now hear this. This is the captain. Valiant crew of the Ferium Brigita. We are moments from engagement. 
which may see our beloved ship's destruction. She paused and let the information sink in. We have one chance. Every crew member must perform their duty to the absolute utmost of their ability, no matter how trivial it may seem. It is not happenstance. You should find yourselves here, in this moment. This is destiny. These are the moments which will become legends spoken of millennia from now. Ensure we are remembered well. These traitors must be defeated. So the light of the Imperium is never extinguished. It falls on each one of you to do this. All hands must raise to this occasion, or we are lost. She cut the Vox. Vox, open a channel to the Sword of Truth, so we may communicate our... The Master of Oxpix interrupted. New contacts. Warp translation. Five vessels. Bearing 212 Mark. 195. Range. 42 megameters. Lieutenant Mira shouted. That's right on top of us. How? Torpedoes launched to the stern. Multiples. The Master of Auspex said. Rumko sprung into action. Helm! Now heading! Two, one, zero, mark, one, nine, five, one quarter acceleration. Auspex, give me prow view. Orbital magnification. On the screen ahead, the edge of the orbital plate swung away, replaced by seemingly open space, until the receding engines of the Sagratum Victus came into view. Magnification activated in stages until the view showed the ship definitely. Just in time to see multiple lance batteries smash into it. The void shields buckled moments before a torrent of torpedo volleys struck. Explosions blossomed across the Victus, and a ca- catastrophic detonation blew the ship apart. The Predator's aspects went blind, momentarily overwhelmed by a Victus death. Rumko's thoughts flew to Boto Gregamond and his crew. She compartmentalized her emotions. There'd be time to mourn later. Ordnance, prepare torpedoes. Widespread. We must disrupt their formation. That trick with the mines. We're going to do it here instead. She drew a new circle in her data slate between Cathonia and the new incoming ships. Rumko's monocular and a hololith populated with targeting information from the new ships as the auger arrays came back online. She made a moment to note the names and displacements. They were thousands of kilometers away from where the Brigitto would drop the mines. Talion, Nova Frigate, Conquest, Firestorm Frigate, Blood of Cothonia, Havoc Destroyer, Requiem of Athena, Surya Light Cruiser, Luprakal Spear, Eclipse Battle Cruiser. She knew these ships. She served alongside them. Their officers and crew were all oathbreakers and traitors. Except a Lupercal spear. She'd never seen that one before. She brought up a more detailed view, but the ship lurked just at the edge of the Auspex range. Lupercal spear, fortunately, formerly bringer of justice, last known commander, Captain Gregion Dachio. A cascade of information followed detailing weapons, shield arrays, armor configuration, and last known actions. The emotion she'd suppressed since the betrayal of her task force surged to the fore. Rinko smiled. Finally, a silver lining. In addition to being a traitor, Drakir was officious, pompous, and less than competent. She had a chance to make him pay. She fed his anticipated course and speed data into the Strategitium Cogniteurs, and they spat out a timing solution that mirrored her estimates. She passed the data to the Ordnance section. Ordnance, drop mines as we pass through the region. Delayed activation. We lay widespread on torpedoes. We want their formation to remain as tight as possible. Captain, shouldn't we slow the pace of the mines effectively? Lisi asked. As was her duty, she wasn't questioning Rumko's command. She was still trying to learn despite the situation. Admirable. 
Rumka bruised herself with the calculations for her next maneuver. She prompted the second officer. Lieutenant? Lieutenant Miris answered. By laying the mines while we are in the motion, the captain is imbuing them with the Brigitte's momentum. They will be continuing along our course, indefinitely, or until they enter an orbit around Cothonia's star. I suspect they'll make contact sooner than that. Rumko nodded as she complimented her calculations and sent her projected maneuvers to the cognitors and down to the secondary bridge. Altur double-check these numbers. If they're off by one iota... Commander Altur's voice came back immediately. And walk. Warning runes flashed across the cognito displays, indicating the multiple fail-saves preventing Rumko from, from executing her plan. She overrode each in turn. Single torpedo launch. Second torpedo. Aspect's mechanical voice announced. Rumko scanned the ships ahead. They were still out of range. Bearing. The master of Auspex was already answering as she spoke. One eight eight one mark one nine two range one one megameters and closing. Course indicators are near miss if we maintain this heading. Behind us, Lieutenant Mears questioned. He checked his station's data feeds. They came from the Sword of Truth. Rumko's mind moved to betrayal. But then why would they dumb fire their torpedoes? Why would they miss? The legionary Astartes weren't incompetent. They must think we're breaking orbit and abandoning the orbital plate. It's a shot across the stern, as it were, but we can use it. With a bit of luck. Helm, use a Pergito as a mask at the Sword of Truth's torpedoes from the enemy. Ensure we change course before they reach 500 kilometers. We don't need them cooking off in our wake. Runko glanced at the hands of the chrono. And slow down our acceleration to decimal 2-3. Incoming message from the Sword of Truth. The messenger, the Vox, said. They're ordering us to return to our station. Rumko looked to Sergeant Jalid. Your brethren don't mince words, do they? No. Jalid answered. Vox, contact the Sword of Truth and let them know that we are thankful for their assistance. But to converse their orders, we will return to our station shortly. The small course correction into the path of the torpedoes and the change in velocity show the Purgito's mines rocketing forward under displays. They would become active in a moment and detonate if any of the enemy ships drew near them. The Sword of Truth had ensured the last one would be them. Rumco needed to narrow their options further. She drew a firing solution on a data slate and sent it to the Ordnance Station. Ordnance! Short salvo. Three torpedoes. Proximity fuses. She shows the conquest. One of the frigates. It surged forward in close formation with its sister frigate, Talon. In the nearest of the course of the incoming Sword of Truth's torpedoes, she needed to nudge its course just a bit. Of course. If the conquest didn't adjust, the Brigitte's torpedoes would find their mark. She presented the conquest command with a new wind scenario. Master Gunner, bring Lance and micro batteries online. Ready. Two stations responded simultaneously. Ready. Rimko checked the range of both incoming torpedoes and the enemy ships. The latter weren't coming at her quickly enough. Vox, open a channel to the bringer of justice, or the Lupercast spear. Whatever they're calling themselves nowadays. They're not responding. But they are receiving. Broadcast this. Captain Drakeo. This is Captain Rumko Saliska. I am disappointed, Gigian. Surely treason is the only way you can get command of anything of note. And your masters let you keep the battle cruiser. You have my congratulations. The master of Vox shook his head. Nothing, Captain. Give it a moment. Incoming transmission from... Rumko cut him off with a gesture and pointed to the holodith. Gigi and Draco 
replace the strategic view. This is the Lubukov Spear. I see you have a new command as well. The Therm Brigitto. Looks to be a fine ship. A shame. Out of consideration for our past service, I'll grant you a chance to join our fleet. Stand down. You are outnumbered and outgunned. Dracula said. But not outmatched. I don't suppose you'd ask your pathetic companions to stand down so we may face off captain to captain? Hardly. Then I suppose I shall have to bait you five to one. <laughs> Elegant as ever. I will have additional satisfaction knowing you commanded the Brigitte when she burns. Lubka nodded. If I escaped before, and this time you lack the element of surprise, I pity you. Without the edge of treachery, you are simply incapable. I wonder if your new masters reward incompetence. Let's find out together, shall we? She signaled to cut the link to the Vox. That should do it. Vox announced. Enemy ships have accelerated. Rate of closure increasing. Commander Alto's voice broke in from the secondary bridge. Maneuvers look good. The cargoers chimed in agreement an instant later. Rumko smiled. Ordnance! Fire torpedoes! Three torpedoes raced away from the Brigito towards the conquest. Helm, cut acceleration. Power from the mains to plow thrusters. Execute maneuver one. Everyone lurched forward and sideways as the kinetic dampeners struggled to compensate for the change in momentum. The Brigitte stayed on the same vector, but slid sideways, pointing her broadsides at the enemy ships. She had just crossed the T to the incoming fleet. She could bring her full broadsides to bear, while they could only fire the prow and turret weapons if they wished to remain on course. Gunner, lock onto the Talon. Rumko glanced at her chrono. Fire all lances and port side micro batteries. Lisi looked confused. They're all out of range. Rumko held up a finger to the yeoman, indicating she should wait a moment. Are they? Helm, prepare for 180 degree roll. Double broadside maneuver. The Grito shuddered as the port micro batteries, mass drivers, and the lance weapons fired at once. Rumko monitored the power levels on the dorsal lance turrets and waited for them to recharge. Incoming lance fire, impacting void shields. Ospec's mechanical voice rang out. The ship shuddered dully as the shield shunted the majority of the energy away. The Lupercar's spear is breaking away on a different attack vector. Commander Alta, track the Lupercar's spear. Try to see what she is going. Rumko ordered. Aye, him work. The Brigitte's dorsal lance turrets came back online. Him, execute roll. Gunner, stand by to fire subordinate side micro batteries and all lance weapons. Rumko attention focused on the hands of her chrono. She saw the ship's maneuvers in her mind's eye. Mathematics and physics detailed the outcome, and she didn't need to watch the display. Metal groaned as a Brito's superstructure suffered the stress of change momentum. Rumko sensed it wasn't a groan of protest. The Brigitte's machine spirit stretched itself like a warrior flexing at the onset of combat. She wanted revenge. The weapon arcs lined with a talon. Fire in sequence! Now! 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 Rumko snapped her fingers in time to punctuate her words. The Ferrum and Brigitte bucked under the recoil of their cannons, combined with the enemy fire striking the shields. They're firing again, Lieutenant Mira said. Treachery void shields is down. Primary and secondary holding, Rumko ordered. Helm maims, 50% acceleration. Three, two, one, burn. She was pushed back into the command throne as kinetic dampeners did the best to compensate. Execute maneuver two, now. 
the Brigitte shot away from the incoming traitors and towards the far side of Carthonia. Rumko turned her attention to Yomanisi. When we fired the micro-batteries, the Talon was out of range, as you noted. But you failed to account for their rate of closure, as did they. They were too concerned with their lance fire. The ship bucked violently, hard enough to shake the legionary Jalid from his statue-like stance. He took a simple step forward to brace himself. Incoming lance fire! Secondary void shield is down! Rimko felt her face tense in frustration. She had hoped the void shields would be more robust. She continued her lesson and pointed the horror of strategic view. The Talon ran into the first micro-battery volley. Just then, digital representations of cascading explosions peppered her prowl. She began to turn as her captain realized the second volley was speeding towards them. The Sword of Truth's torpedoes raced past Pegito towards the Conquest. The Conquest tried to turn as well, but the Talon's proximity limited her options. She had nowhere to go. Their point defenses came online, but targeted the Pegito's three torpedoes set with proximity fuses. The Sword of Truth's torpedoes raced on unopposed. And then, the Pegito's mines came online. The traitor's task force ran headlong into them. The Hololoth rendered massive explosions across both frigates, until the Sword of Truth's torpedo struck the Conquest. The Conquest icon glowed brightly and winked out. Auspex's feed to the Hololoth ceased as the Conquest death overwhelmed the Augur arrays. Ghost images of the last known positions and courses of the ships populated the view. On the tactical display, Carthonia loomed ever larger. Gunner, Target the Talon with dorsal lance batteries. They were the only weapons that had the Talon still within their targeting arcs. Fire! Rimko glanced at her chrono. The Horlift should have come back online by now. The fact that it had not meant that Brigitte's lance weapons had delivered a mortal blow. Vox, send to the Lubricar Spear with my compliments. Just speaking the name felt distasteful to her. Three against one. Gigian, I am prepared to accept your surrender. A rasping sound came from the legionary Jamid, as it <laughs> took a moment for Rumko to realize he was trembling with laughter. Rumko congratulated the crew. Excellent work. We'll have a moment as they recover. Get those void shields back online. Boost power to integrity fields. Decrease acceleration to nil. Reverse heading. Prepare to burn retros. Message from Lubricar Spear. It reads, Have richer targets. Enjoy your brief respite. The master of Vox said. On the tactical display, Carthonia swung out of view as the prowl swept to the open void and the Brigitte's main engines. Aimed at the planet, the kinetic dampener stretched in protest at the unaccustomed abuse. Rimko turned to Legionary Jalil. Sergeant, we are heading back to our station above the plate, but we are moving too quickly and would overshoot Carthonia at our present rate. We will attempt to use the planet's atmosphere to slow us as we fire our main engines to meet our orbital target. You will attempt, Jalid asked. Rimko nodded. If we fail, it won't be our concern any longer. She leaned back at the command throne, took a moment to expand a strategic view, but reminded of the loyalist feet. Had scattered across the system, each surviving vessel was now engaged in a struggle for survival against multiple opponents. She searched for the Praxis Decidium, Admiral Cambalis' ship and found it much nearer to the planet than she had expected. The Admiral was locked in a mortal exchange of fire with the Lupercal spear and some escorts. The escorts harried the Praxis, while the Lupercal spear brought the full might of an Eclipse-class battlecruiser to bear. The already wounded Praxis de Clirum didn't stand a chance. Rumko forced herself to watch as the Lupercal spear closed and delivered the death blow. She owed the Admiral that much, at least. 
The master of the helm spoke, her voice quiet and unemotional. Interior face faced with the ship overriding her human demeanor. 30 seconds from the first burn. And go post your emotions from her mind. Execute burn on your command. Stay within the parameters of the verified maneuver. The Brigitte's main engines fired at the precise designated time and cut the velocity of the cruiser significantly. It wasn't enough. Still, she hurtled towards a planet. The cruiser altered trajectory, slightly moving with a nimble grace. The bit in his eyes. Void shields are back online, the master of Nurom said. It hardly mattered. Void shields couldn't protect against atmospheric re-entry. The ship's hull began to glow. At first a dull ochre, then yielding into a bright red. As the Brigato kissed Carthonia's upper atmosphere, the ship bucked and shook as winds it was never meant to weather struck at its surfaces. Integrity field generators overloaded and rain sparks throughout the stratagem and down into the command dais. Unko referred her chrono. She prepared to give an order, but she had chosen her crew well. Burning retros came the still distant voice from the helm. The vibrations running through the ship grew wilder and stronger. A lumen strip glowed brightly and then popped, showering the lower command deck with debris. The tactical Ocadus showed the skin of the Brigato glowing an orange white of the forge. Sheets of armor the size of buildings curled back upon themselves as the outer surface battled away. She looked at her chrono just for a few more seconds. If the calculations were wrong, Carthonia's atmosphere would shred the Pergito at the velocity they were traveling. It would happen so quickly that no one aboard would even know. Executing maneuver 3, the helm announced. The prow thrusters fired, pitching the Brigito vertical against the planet, but exposing her entire cross-section to the buffeting winds. The ship's vibrations grew nearly unbearable. Rinko felt as if her teeth might fly from her skull in an instant. In the lower dais, the station exploded and set alight the servitor attending it. Acid smoke swept the area, bearing the in incongruous smells of hydraulic fluids, oils, and burning flesh. Firing main engines, Helm announced. The acceleration slammed them back into their stations. Gray dots flooded Rumko's view, and blackness crept at the edges of her visions as it tunneled. She had to shout to be heard over the howling of the atmosphere's interaction with the hull. Engine arm! Increase power to integrity fields! The kinetic dampeners! She didn't hear his acknowledgement, but the weight crushing her down lessened perceptibly. Then faster than she could have guessed, the atmosphere roared, died down to a whistle, and then silence. Nurmko let out a breath and felt the tension run from her as the crew, as the bridge crew cheered. Commander Alto's voice broke through the comms. One for the record books, to be sure. The Brigitte's tipped past the vertical, continuing into her brow, pitched in her direction of travel once again, and she continued her parabolic arc around the planet. Rimko's monoculars showed their altitude above the planet, climbing rapidly. The atmosphere hadn't slowed them as much as she had estimated. Helm, slow us down. Just a little bit more. We don't want to overshoot our mark. Ordnance, prepare torpedoes. She glanced at the time signature on her monocular and verified it on her chrono. We should see the edge of the orbital plate in a few seconds. On cue, the orbital plate came into view like a sunrise against the edge of Corthonia's surface. Hundreds of assault crafts, bombers, and fighters swarmed around it. The Brigitte sailed slightly beneath it. But at the plate drew nearer, the ship's trajectory became even with it, and then slightly above. Gargantuan explosions raptured the surface of the orbital plate and drew gasp from the several other crew members. 
The Sword of Truths traded horrific blows with the traitor destroyer, Blood of Corthonia. And though she conducted herself well, it was only a matter of time. She needed help now. Ordnance, fire all torpedoes at the Blood of Corthonia. Gunner, lance batteries at the same. Rumko paused, her eyes disbelieving what the display showed her. The Blood of Corthonia and Requiem of Athumla emptied their torpedo magazines at the orbital plate. Ospex confirmed trajectory of enemy ordnance. She raised her voice despite herself. The monotone mechanical voice validated the other indicators. Helm, get us between the plate and those torpedoes. Gunner, all macro batteries and lance at the ordnance. The enemy were conducting an orbital bombardment at the plate. Loyalist forces on the surface would be devastated. Nuclear class warheads wouldn't give them a chance. She could allow that to happen. Torpedo impacts on Blood of Corthonia. Rumko gave the destroyer status a curiously glance on the display. The ship foundered, thumbling away to a different orbital plate. She conducted the secondary bridge. Alter, I cede fire control of Lance turrets, flak cannons, and point defenses to you. Fire as they bear. An instant later, enemy bombers strafed the Pergito with strings of bombs as the cruiser's defensive fire downed two of them. The Pergito rumbled with the impacts of catastrophic explosions. Damage indicator runes flashed across the displays and data panels. On the tactical oculus, she watched the incoming torpedoes as distant points. She increased the magnification. They'd be able to intercept them, but only just. Engine arm, where are my void shields? One is online. Two is recovering. Three is non-responsive. Rinko strained forward against the command seat straps. Her hands gripped the arms of the throne, knuckles turning white. Torpedoes inbound. Ten seconds. Her eyes locked with the master of the engine arm. He shook his head. Not this time. Vox. Shipwide. Brace, Brace for impact. impact. Lieutenant Miras echoed her command. Second, Second collision. collision. Galaxons and alarm. Bells sounded. And then the torpedo struck. Cataclysmic explosions burst, buckled the remaining void shield, and then detonated all along the Pergito's port side. Cogdor banks exploded outwards, shredding their attendant servitors and crew members with shrapnel. Displays winked out one by one, and then the lumens collapsed, plunging them all into darkness. Another explosion rocked the ship, this one making the others appear distant. Rumko knew a torpedo had impacted the ship's superstructure, not far from the bridge. She instantly thumbed the comms button for a secondary bridge. Arthur, what have you got? There was no response. She smelled ozone and the coppery tang of blood. Her body rose against the command throne straps and she knew they lost gravity. Emergency power. A moment later, feeble lumen strips fluttered into life. A broken and bleeding servitor floated across the bridge. She galvanized her crew back into action. Status. We're still here. Do your duty, and let's give those bastards a good as we got. Lieutenant Mirez relayed status from his station as he came back online. Void shields are down. One is recharging. Two and three offline. Negative pressure detected on decks 28 to 37 port side. Loss of hull integrity. Deck 8 appears to be open to the void. Rumko's monocular projected casualty rates, exceeding 18,000 crew. She blinked the information away. The tactical view came back online. The Sword of Truth pointed directly at the Requiem of Eternia and fired her engines for flak speed. What are they doing? Rumko said aloud. The only thing they can. Sergeant Jalad's rumbling voice answered. I apologize, Sergeant. 
I had assumed the traitors wanted to capture the orbital plate. It appears I was mistaken. My brothers will have come to the same conclusion. Allow some time to withdraw to the planet's surface, Jalid said. The sword of truth slammed into the Requiem of Thuma. The impact mortally wounded the Requiem and sent it careening. The Sword of Truth only lasted a few seconds before a series of cascading explosions ripped across her form prow to stern, reducing her to a fiery debris. The torpedoes incoming from Lupercar Spear, the Master Auspex called out. Tensions apparent even within the mechanical voice. Kigion had managed to clear the planet and bring his ordinance to bear. Perhaps she hadn't given him enough credit. Void shields! She knew the order was useless as she shouted it. Helm, roll the ship. Spread out the impacts. The tactical oculus showed the view rolling as Brigitte struggled against her own mass and tried to react quickly against the laws of physics. The second volley of torpedoes struck. Mayhem filled Rumko's world. The lumens flickered again. A thin stream of light poured in from the oculus above the command dais. Light reflected from Cathonia's star by the planet itself. It crept through a fissure in the void shutters and passed down through the arm glass, unfiltered and ethereal. But this time the damage had been mitigated. The lumens returned along with gravity. The display snapped back to life and Rumko stared horrified at what they showed. The Requiem of Athoma oriented itself to point directly at the orbital plate and fired her main engines. There was nothing the Pagito could do but observe. We have a port of Traitor Astartes on deck. Seven. The Master of Arms shouted. Our people cannot hold them off. The Traitor Light, Cruiser. Over four kilometers in length and nearly 500 meters a beam, smashed into the orbital plate at full acceleration. As her reactors went critical, titanic explosions rippled out from the point of impact with enough force to level mountains. The orbital plate lost integrity and shattered. Debris tumbled into titanic chunks toward the planet below and outwards toward the Pugito. The Lupercal Spear broke away, and Rumko lost track of it on her display amid the interference and chaos. She had sat dumbstruck at the amount of devastation filling the display. There could be no survivors. The battle was lost. New contacts! Traitor vessels entering orbit! Auspex reported. That meant the Loyalist delaying action was over too. It was academic now. Lieutenant Mirez prodded her into action. Your orders, Captain. She shook at him and realized that tears oculated the vision on her macula. She pulled the device off her face. We run. Her voice sounded faint and cracked in her ears. Sergeant Dela, will you be so kind as to see to our unwelcome guest? But when she turned to him, he was no longer there. She wasn't sure when he had left the bridge. Rimko nodded as she forced herself to regain her composure. She exhaled deeply. We run. Her voice issued firm and direct. We make for Terra. We carry the warning. Her hand snatched a data slate in the arm of the command throne, and she plotted a new course and sent it to the helm. Helm, here. Come to this new heading. Burn main engines. All ahead. Fall. The course looked to take them directly into the heart of Carthonia. Your man Lisi gave her a puzzled look. Not to worry, your man. I don't mean to crash us into the surface. We will execute a gravity assist to boost us away from the planet and into the system on a hyperbolic trajectory. We should gain enough additional acceleration to let us outrun these curves. What's to stop the traitors from doing the same? Lisi asked. Nothing. Except that we aren't their objective. Incoming transmission from Lucal Cow Spear. You're running again. 
you won't get away this time. Didn't you want to fight one on one to see which one of us is actually the best? You chide me for stealing my command. At least I earned it. Your masters needed a placeholder. You're just a name for them to read aloud from the memorial rules on your death. Rumiko bristled, but she wouldn't give Gigi on the satisfaction. No response, Fox. They can chase us if they like. In the meantime, gonna target incoming debris. Do what you can. Some of the pieces of rubble were larger than the Bagheera itself. Rumko focused the tactical display aft. It was initially disconcerting as the Brigito divved between thumbling chunks, which scattered outwards at remarkable speeds. Vox, contact the planet's surface and warn them of incoming orbital wreckage. Perhaps they will be able to take shelter. She couldn't imagine the devastation that would follow the deorbiting remnants of the orbital plate. She assumed there would be someone new in the chain of command to pick up the pieces of the disaster, and she certainly wished them well. Reactor 3 suffice critical damage in the last exchange. I shut it down to avoid widespread confrontation. The Master of Ingenorum informed her. Very well. Void shields. We no longer have enough power to activate the third shield or the dorsal and vertical lance turrets. They are offline. Void shield. One is nearly restored. Two is still offline, I'm afraid. The Brigitte swung in low orbit over Carthonia and then rocketed outwards towards one of the system's Mendeville points. The maneuver brought her an additional 50% gravity and acceleration, which would make her difficult for the traitors to catch. Master of Arms, what is the status of action to repel borders? Leading towards our forces, but with severe losses. Rimko nodded. That was out of her hands. She imagined she could hear the thump of weapons fire echoing through the corridors and decks below. How is our galley field? All would be for naught if they would not translate into the Imperium. Tolerable. Ingenon replied. His voice did not sound confident. The master of all specs interrupted. Lupercal's spear on intercept course. Rimko's breath hissed between her teeth. She chided herself for losing situational awareness in the wake of the plate's destruction. She sent to the tactical view on the hololith on the incoming contact and snapped her monocular back into place on over her eye. The data populated. Gigian had positioned his battlecruiser just off the Pegida's path in an attempt to stop her from disengaging. Poetic. Rimko would have to change course, bleeding off the precious and hard-won boost of the gravity assist, or whether a sure-to-be-devastating broadside they were going to lose. Her fist pounded the arm of the command throne as the implicative left her lips. Lieutenant Mears tried to add some levity, concerning the dire situation. I've got a bottle of Rinka that says you come up with something, Captain. She couldn't disappoint her crew. Rumko took the gesture as it was intended. Contraband, Lieutenant. I'm shocked. I should have you censored. But then I wouldn't be able to accept your wager. The ships were thousands of kilometers away from one another. But the rate of closure reduced the time until contact to mere minutes. Rumko scanned the Lupercal spear. She hadn't fared as well as it had initially seemed during her confrontation with the Praxis Delictiarum, and wreckage from the orbital plate. She had a gaping wound over a large portion of her port side, which ventured atmosphere and shed large fragments of debris. Gigion favored that side, choosing to pass the Pegito to the starboard. This suited Rumko as the Pegito's own port side had suffered severe damage. She had an idea. Orens, prepare to launch torpedoes on delayed activation. Just use the impetus from the magnetic propulsion 
from the tubes to expel. Set the plasma drives on a delay. She verified the rate of closure and plotted a new course that wouldn't bleed off too much of their velocity on their current vector. This would force a Lupica spear to turn to keep her within weapon arcs, and once the spear turned, the gash in her port side would be exposed to the torpedoes. Scattered and ineffective incoming fire from the spear peppered the void around the Pegido. Hold, Lupica said. Lipika's spear is firing torpedoes. Full speed. That was Rumko had been waiting for. Helm, execute new course. Enroll the ship 180. Prepare to double broadside. Yum and Lisi grew concerned. Ma'am, that exposes our damaged port side. On the tactical display, the Lipika spear looked inverted to the Brigido. Correct, Ingenarm. Don't let that void shield go down. Ingenarm nodded, even though Nimco knew there wasn't much he'd be able to do about it. Ornance, launch our torpedoes. Tight group, delayed activation, now. The ship shuddered as the prow tubes ejected the inert torpedoes just far enough that they cleared the vessel. The new course took them easily out of incoming torpedoes' reach. They shot by, moving through the space the Pegito would have been occupying. The Lupica spear turned to engage them, just as Rumko had known Gigion would. As the ships raced past one another, Rumko said, Port batteries, fire! The Pegitos convulsed as her macro batteries fired in sequence. Slight early, accounting for the spear's closing distance. Roll for double broadside! Rumko ordered, the spear response to a fire of her own. The void shield won't hold. Brace for impact. An instant later, the Brigado's void shield collapsed, but the incoming fire rained down along the ship's previously undamaged dorsal plane, and though she bled molten metal, the armor there served its function. The ship continued its roll to deliver the second half of the double broadside, the starboard micro-batteries and lances belched forth, firing to the aft extreme of her weapon arcs. The spear's void shield flared brightly, then crumpled. Vox to Lupica's spear. Gigion, now we learn that what happens when we face one another on equal terms? You lose. Your name won't be read from the memorial rolls. There are no such honors for traitors. No one will remember you at all. Rimko gestured to cut the vox. The spear continued to turn to keep the Pegido in their arcs. On the Hollowlith, the Pegido's delay torpedoes activated and raced towards the spear's open wound. Catastrophic explosions drove the battlecruiser reactors critical, and she gave birth to a temporary star. Rimko turned to Yominisi. Yeoman, tell our navigator to translate as soon as predictable. Our destination is Terra. Lieutenant Mirrors, she turned to face her second officer. Yes, Captain. About that bottle of Rechna. All right, that's going to do it for another one of these videos. Sorry, this one took quite a long time to actually get finished and brought out. There was a lot of editing, starting at the very beginning, where I was a little bit monotone because I was sick. Horribly so, and I had to constantly listen to myself cough and wheeze and um, almost die on the microphone. To barely getting out of the sickness, and then finish being sick and actually being able to put some effort into the words and voices. And now after having to redo the complete ending of it because it was corrupted so I had to redo that whole entire section you don't know what section it is but keen ear listeners will probably tell the difference between audios in no time flat anyways let us say thank you to our ongoing patreon supporters Kokoa, Zach Keller Coffee Meltdown 480, 
Eldrick Maldred, Fortis Unam, Toskowski was right, and Lilac NPC. If you want to be a uh, Patreon member, you can in the link down in the description down below. You'll be able to see Not Safe for Work art, uh, the, of my own volition, updates for what's coming up and what's going on in the uh, processing and everything else of the videos, bloopers when they happen, and a whole bunch of other really neat things, such as my very own Team Fortress 2 tabletop game that I've been working on for the past 10 or 11 years now. Eh, 10 years, I think. Been a while. Uh, 2016, whatever that was. Mm. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Things are going well for you, hopefully. And... What have you been doing while watching or listening to this video? Were you working? Were you doing some yard work or whatever? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what everyone's up to. Anyways... Stay safe out there, and can't wait to see you the next one. Until then, bye-bye.